better tradesperson. My name is Rob Densaw. I'm the sprinkler instructor at the Pipe Industry College. Today I'm going to be testing the reduced pressure backflow assembly and just walking through the steps and the procedures on how to do this correctly. So before you um, work on any of these assemblies and go into anybody's um, building or occupancy, you want to make sure you have permission to shut the water off. So that's the first thing you do is you're going to let them know that you're there and you're going to be working on their system and they're going to be shutting the water down. Once you've done that, we're going to make sure we're working on the right assembly, verify with our paperwork that it is the assembly we're supposed to be working on. This is a Watts 009 M3QT, serial number 436288, and it's three quarters. This is the correct assembly. <clears throat> so we're going to be doing four tests on this assembly. First test is going to be the relief valve opening point. So we're going to need a minimum two PSI out of that. Second test is we're going to test check valve number two in the reverse direction of flow. Test number three. We're going to get our actual pressure drop across check valve number one, our differential on that. And then our fourth test will just be our line pressure. So first of all, before we start this, now I'm going to turn the water on just so we can establish flow. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to check and make sure we have no leaks. We have no visible rust or contamination on the assembly itself. We're going to Verify we have our proper clearances. We've got a proper air gap underneath the relief valve opening. Um, we do, so that's good. Once we've established that we have no leaks, we're going to establish flow in the assembly by opening test cock number four and leaving test cock number four open. It doesn't need to be much, just a little bit. Once we've done that, now we can flush test cocks number one by opening test cock one and closing test cock one. Opening test cock two and closing test cock two and opening test cock three and closing test cock three. And all this does is gets any debris out of the test cocks themselves. And the reason why we left four open is we want to keep that pressure in the zone lower than the supply pressure so we don't accidentally dump or discharge our relief valve. So now that we've flushed our test cocks, we're going to get our differential gauge ready to go. So we're going to take our high side hose and hook it up to our high side control valve. Then we're going to take our low side, which is our blue hose, and hook it up to our low side control valve. And last but not least, we're going to take our bypass hose and hook it up to our bypass control valve. Try not to over tighten these. You don't want them leaking, but again, you don't want to crush everything either especially in the, in the control valves themselves. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Okay. Just gonna wrap that up. We won't need that until we do test number two. First of all, we're gonna hook up our low side control valve or low side hose, sorry, to test cock number three. Then we're going to hook up our high side hose to test cock number two. We're going to open test cock three. And again, we're going to establish flow in that zone. We're going to open our low side bleed valve and let it, just let it flow, leave it open. Then we can open test cock number two on our high side hose and we can flush the air out of the high side of the gauge. Let it run for a little bit, get all that air out of there. Then we're gonna close our high side first 
leaving our low side flowing. That's our zone pressure. And then we can close our low side bleed valve. Once we've done that, we can just hang up our gauge and close shutoff valve two only. What we're doing here now is we're going to record our apparent pressure drop. This isn't our actual pressure drop. This is just our apparent pressure drop on check valve number one. This is not a test. It's just a recording of the pressure. We've got an apparent pressure drop of about 8.3 PSI. So I'm going to record that 8.3 PSI under apparent pressure drop. Now we're going to do our first test. So we're just going to give this a wipe down. We're going to make sure that there's no drips hanging on it. We don't want any false drips falling on our hand and giving us a false reading of the test. So we've wiped it down. We have no drips hanging off of it. I'm going to open my high side, which is my red valve, my red control valve. I'm going to open that all the way. And what we're doing here is we're going to open the high side, then we're going to open the low side just a quarter of a turn, and we're going to allow the pressure from the supply to go through the high side hose, through the gauge, and into the zone of reduced pressure, which will drop the gauge until this relief valve opens and it'll give us a reading of how strong the spring is in the relief valve. So I've opened the high side completely. Now I'm going to open the low side control valve just a quarter turn. I'm going to hold my hand underneath the relief valve and I'm going to just wait for this gauge to slowly drop. You don't want it to drop too quick because you want an accurate reading. So I've got, I'm slowly dropping, I'm at 7.2, 7, 6.8, 6.4, and it will tend to speed up as you get closer. So you want to turn it down a little bit sometimes, just close the valve a little bit. 5.8, 5.6, 5.4, and we our relief valve opened at 4.2. You can see the drip. Now I'm just going to close my low side control valve and leave it closed. I'm going to leave my high side, my red valve, fully open. So we had our relief valve opening was 4.2. Test number one is complete. Test number two, we're going to test our check valve number two in the reverse direction of flow. First thing we need to do is bleed our bypass hose. So we're just going to crack this yellow control valve just a touch here just to get that water fl flowing through the hose, get the air out of the hose. Just like so. And if the relief valve does dump, it doesn't matter. The test is already complete on it. So I'm going to leave it running a little bit. I'm going to connect it to the test cock number four. And then I'm going to close my bypass control valve. Now, in order to do this test, I have to reestablish the zone. So I'm going to open that low side control valve on the back, or sorry, bleed valve. I'm reestablishing the zone. So that zone is back at full pressure. Now I'm going to be bypassing the supply pressure through the red hose, through the gauge, back into the yellow hose, it's going to create pressure on the downstream side of check valve number two. And it's going to compress that check valve back a little bit, which is going to make the differential gauge drop a little bit because the pressure in the zone is going to increase a little bit due to the compression. So we should see a little bit of a drop there. So 
First thing we want to do now is we've established our zone. It's back to, back to its normal pressure. I'm going to open test cock number four. And then I'm just going to open my bypass valve, yellow valve, control valve, all the way. And we've seen that decompress quite a bit. It went from about 8.8 .8 down to 8 PSI. So now we're just going to give it two minutes or 10 seconds, right? 10 seconds for the, our testing here, but in the field, you would be giving it two minutes. And we're gonna just, we're gonna watch that gauge to make sure it doesn't drop. Once it's settled, we're reading about 7.8, so we're gonna count off our 10 seconds. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So check valve number two is holding tight in the reverse direction of flow. We don't have to record the pressure. We're just going to record that it's holding tight. We're going to check off. Check valve number two is holding tight. We're good to go. Now that's test number two completed. Test number three. Now we're going to get the actual pressure drop or pressure differential across check valve number one. In order to do that, it's pretty simple. We're leaving our, our bypass control valve wide open. We're leaving our high side control valve wide open. Our, our low side was closed. All we're going to do is we're going to open our low side bleed valve on the back and we're just going to reestablish the, the pressure in the zone, the differential. So I've closed that. I'm seeing the pressure is about 8.5 PSI. So again, I'm in the field, I'm going to wait two minutes. For practical purposes here on this test here, we're just going to do 10 seconds. I'm going to count down from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Check valve number one is holding tight in the direction of flow at 8.5 PSI. I'm going to record that. So check valve number one is holding tight in the direction of flow. Now what I can do is we're going to, we're going to calculate our buffer. So our buffer is we need a, in a, in an RP, we need a minimum of three PSI differential between the uh, check valve number one differential and our relief valve opening point. So in this case, our check valve number one we had a pressure differ differential of 8.5 and our relief valve opening point was 4.2. So 8.5 minus 4.2 gives us 4.3 PSI. We're going to document that on our buffer. We're good to go. That's a pass so far. Now we can take our gauge off of the assembly. We no longer need our gauges here. We're just going to do our final test, which is our line pressure. I'm just going to disassemble all this. And again, our very last test is just our line pressure. We're going to take our gauge, hook it up to test cock number one. We're going to open test cock number one and just record our line pressure. We've got about 52 PSI here. So I'm just going to document that under line pressure, 52 PSI. We've already inspected our air gap. We're all good. So I can check off our clearance for air gap. Everything has passed. So I'm going to check the box on pass. I'm going to sign my test certificate. I'm going to shut down test cock number one and disconnect our gauge. Now we're just going to wipe everything down, make sure we have no leaks, no test cocks are dripping. Even if you leave these test cocks open a little bit, they will slowly drip. So we want to just give it a second here. 
make sure we got no water coming out of them. Now, before you turn the water back on, it's always a good idea to contact the owner to make sure nobody has taken advantage of you having the water shut down and they've gone downstream and started working on the system. So once we verified that the system's tight, nobody's got anything open, we can turn the water back on. One last time, we're gonna check for leaks. Make sure everything's good and the system's back in service. Hopefully this video helped. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.